This is News 24. I'm Erin Bates. We're sitting down with Lungile Jacobs, who's the head of alumni relations at UCT, to find out what that institution is going to be doing to commemorate June 16, uh, 1976, and the 40th anniversary this year. Thank you, Lungile, for your time. Well, thanks, Erin. Thanks. So let's start off with the program from beginning to end. Who are some of the highlights on your panel? Who? Um, I think the, the most important part of the day for me although we've got uh, about seven speakers lined up, um, is the keynote speaker. The keynote speaker um, is the gentleman that uh, was key and very instrumental to the whole uh, uh, idea around the spirit of 76, which is the Soweto uprising. Um, our keynote speaker, um, Murphy Murobe is, is the gentleman that was the brains behind putting together um, a revolution uh, of students, a revolution that um, erupted the whole of Soweto uh, high schools to take to the streets uh, in protest of the introduction of Afrikaans as, as the um, uh, medium of instruction in, in the township schools. So just from that perspective of thinking, it's 1976, there's no social media, there's no um, any kind of uh, network that can spread that quickly, um, that this gentleman and a few of his friends uh, were able to canvas a mass protest. And in fact, if you think about it, as much as it was only Soweto, but it touched the whole country. The whole country came to a standstill on that day. So I don't want to say much, but um, if you speak to um, uh, uh, Murphy Morobe, you will get to realize the extent of the passion that they had at the time as the committee that put together this thing. So he will be the keynote address um, uh, on the day. And then we have other people who were also key around that time uh, in terms of the black consciousness movement. Which of course was a very important part of the kind of background and the context to what happened on June 16. Exactly, yeah. exactly. The black consciousness movement was sort of um, a precursor, if you want to put it that way, to what uh, the, the, the June, uh, June 16 event uh, uh, eventually became, but there was the whole build up, there was a whole momentum that was building mm -hmm. around uh, the black consciousness movement. And those people that I'm talking about is Professor Bani Kitchen, who will be part of the panel as well. And we also have a gentleman called Ish, uh, Ishmael Mkabela, who were also part of the whole um, black uh, consciousness movement at the time. But not only that, I think um, in terms of what we are trying to do at UCT, we are trying to give a broad perspective of what actually, um, how people were touched in the different areas. So we're not only looking at that, but we're also looking at um, what happened at UCT. Mm. And so we're bringing in people who were at UCT at the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've got Alan Hirsch, who was the head of NUSAS at the time at UCT. Uh, Alan, when I spoke to him, he says to me, Lungile, on that day, we also marched down the end to towards Langa, and we got uh, uh, interrupted by security police, and we slept in prison. And so these are things that I wasn't aware of until I started putting this event together. So um, uh, it's going to be quite an interesting uh, interaction of people telling us different stories of how they were affected, or how they were impacted, or how they participated in this whole uh, 1976 story. I suppose what then becomes interesting too is to look back at the history of UCT and where it was either in conflict with the government of the time and where it was in sympathy with the government of the time. Because as much as the students on the ground might have been involved or marching down the N2, the institution had a very different relationship with the state. Have you kind of dealt with those tensions in your planning for the event? Um, as I was planning this event and uh, sending emails to people and asking people to send me comments, you then begin to realize that um, the institution was in conflict in, in a lot of ways, in the sense that 
um, students, being students at the time, um, were quite revolutionary in terms of their ideas. Hence, UCT became known as Moscow on the Hill yes. back in the day. Um, it's because of the how students were quite revolutionary in their uh, approach to the politics of the day. And therefore, the institution found itself in a bit of a conundrum in terms of trying to accommodate the students and their views and also trying to be a state institution mm -hmm. as at the same time. So it was forced into a particular corner which slowly but surely um, found itself um, being bent by students to accommodate some of the pressure that the students were saying um, these unjust laws cannot be tolerated in an educational institution that serves or uh, that strives to make sure that its alumni become the leaders of, of the free world. So you can't then educate people and then but still be abiding by laws uh, that are unjust to a certain part of the community. Yeah. So slowly but surely the university found itself um, shifting, shifting away through the, the force of, uh, uh, I, I do want to say, uh, you know, the SRC and USAS back, back in the day. Yeah. You know, um, we will hear some of these stories on, uh, I don't want to divulge too much. <laughs> You're going to keep all your tricks in your bag so that people come on June the 16th. Yes, I want people to come and share these stories, mm. you know.